Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, are you all right? No. What, what's the matter? What, what are you doing? I'm trying to do a jigsaw, Stuart. Oh, that's, that's quite nice. Quite creative can't thing. I can't do it, though. What do you mean you can't do it? Uh, it's impossible. What's it meant to be a picture of? That, people. Oh, OK, it's got a bit going on there. But you can sort the colours and put the corners in. Have you got the corners in? That's always helpful for a jigsaw. Oh, a single corner, Stuart. There's four oh. corners in all these pieces. Uh, 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 yeah, well, OK, we'll just keep it steady. If you get your colours together in different piles, and how no, much have you... I don't think I can do it, Stuart. Oh, you, you can. No, come on, don't give up. Don't give oh, up now. Don't, don't give me, don't give up. I'm... Oh, no. Oh, you've blown it now, Mark. You're going to have to pick all those pieces up and start again. Um, look, I'll tell you what. Just take a breather. Can we cut to the, uh, the challenge? And then you might feel better after that. And we'll have another look at it. OK. Right. Let's do the challenge. <laughs> so our challenge for today is animal charades. If you've got one of our packs, you'll find a little set of cards in there with lots of different animals on them. The game is to pick a card and try and act out the animal that's on it for someone else to guess. For example, this first one here on my pack is... Did you guess it? I'm sure you did. It's a monkey! Well, I hope you enjoy having a go of that game at home. If you would like to record yourself acting an animal and put it on the Facebook group, you can do that. And some of the rest of us can have a go at seeing if we can guess which animal you were. Oh, well, Stuart, I'm sorry about my little outburst there. Um, it wasn't the best thing to do. I, I just find jigsaw so difficult, though. I, and I, yeah. I, I know I should, I shouldn't just give up like that, should I? Well, I didn't like to say, but no. Um, but you know, to be fair, Mark, I mean, we all find some things difficult, don't we? Mm. Um, and and actually, isn't today's story about some people who had some good times, but also had some times that were quite difficult and they managed uh, not to give up they managed to to keep going so maybe we could have a look at that story yeah let's do it daniel was jewish this meant he was one of the israelites people God had a special agreement with the Israelites. He would be their God, and they would be his people. This meant that God would care for them, guide them and show them how to live. They would do all they could to live in love with God, with each other, and with the world around them. And because of this, they had rules to follow, to show God they were serious about their agreement. The Israelites had many enemies. One of them was the king of Babylon. He was called Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonians attacked the Israelites and took some of them away to live in Babylon, far from home. Daniel was one of these people. So were three of his friends. We know them as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were sent to the king's special training school to forget about being Israelites and learn to be good Babylonians. But the friends couldn't forget their agreement with God or the rules that showed him he was important to them. This made things difficult. The first time this happened, they were asked to eat a type of meat that was against their rules. But Daniel and his friends would not do it. They would only agree to eat vegetables. God was pleased and he made them strong clever, wise, 
and successful. When the king had a strange dream, God even told Daniel what the dream meant, and Daniel told the king. This made the king very pleased, and the friends became important in Babylon. But this wasn't the end of their problems. King Nebuchadnezzar built a huge statue, and said that anyone who didn't bow down to the statue and treat it like a god would be thrown into a fiery furnace. This time, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were in trouble, because they would not do what the king had asked. Someone told the king, and he was angry. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego told Nebuchadnezzar that they could only treat God that way, that God could save them, but even if he didn't, they would not bow down to the statue. So they were tied up and thrown into the fire. But the king was amazed. When he looked, he saw four men walking round in the fire untied, and one of them looked like a god. Nebuchadnezzar had never seen a god rescue like that. He said that God must be true, and that the friends were right to keep following him. After that, he had another strange dream, and again God told Daniel what it meant. This carried on through the years, as Daniel worked for other kings of Babylon. He always worked well, and they were always pleased with him. Through all these years, Daniel never forgot God, and prayed, which means he spoke with him, every single day. One king, Darius, liked Daniel so much that he wanted to put him in charge of everything. This made others very jealous. They wanted to get Daniel in trouble. But the only way was to make a law against God. They suggested that people should only pray to Darius. This made the king feel very important. So he made it a law. Anyone who didn't do it would be fed to his den of lions. Well... Daniel wouldn't do that, and he carried on praying every day to God. When Darius found out that Daniel wasn't obeying the law, the king was so sad. He didn't want to punish Daniel, but the law could not be changed. He said to Daniel, may your God rescue you. And then Daniel was thrown to the lions. But actually, God did rescue him. He shut the mouths of the lions and Daniel wasn't hurt. Daniel and his friends had good times and bad times, but they always chose to follow God. Even though God didn't stop bad things happening, He was there with them, even in the fire and the lion's den. Wow, another great story, Mark. I I love the way Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego um, knew that God was with them in the good times and in the bad times. You know, Daniel and the dark lions, then there, he turned to God uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they actually found God with them in the fiery furnace. Ah, it's just great. Yeah, it's amazing. God was there for them. And actually, they were there for each other as well. Mm -hmm. Many people even now find God there with them in good times and bad. Yeah. I wonder, who can you trust to be there with you, particularly when things are difficult? Family? Friends? God? 
we'll leave you with that question for now. Yep. Stuart. Yes, Mark. I've been thinking. My jigsaw, it wasn't really that big of a difficulty, was it? Well, maybe not. But I'll tell you what, Mark, um, when we're able to visit each other again properly in each other's homes, maybe I could call in sometime and maybe help you with your next jigsaw. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks, Stuart. That'd be brilliant. It's OK. I look forward to it. Great. Me too. OK, well, up next are a couple of activities that you can have a go at together at home. But it's bye from us for now. Yeah. Bye. Well, hi again, everyone. Um, wasn't that a great story about Daniel? And isn't it amazing that even through all those really hard times, they knew that they could trust in God and he was there with them. Um, so today, because we've just heard that story, we are going to make some lion themed crafts. So in your pack, you have got to start with um, a little paper fold craft that we're going to do. So you'll need this sheet. You need to just trim around the edges. I've done mine already. And then I'm going to show you how to fold it Okay, so here's your piece of paper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it over and you're just gonna start by folding your two diagonal corners. So fold it that way, open it up again, fold it the other way, make sure those creases are nice and strong. Then we're gonna open it up again and you're gonna fold down the middle, just join up your corners, fold, and then the same again the other way. Then you're gonna lay it out this side so there's nothing on it and you're going to fold in the printed corners to the middle then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same again you've got a little marker point this time with the lines fold each side in just where it'll be round make sure those folds are nice and pressed down and if you flip it over again, then you just fold these corners out. The creases should help you. And then you end up with your lion's face. And you can then find someone. You can open and shut. And they can choose what they want, choose which number. And then you can maybe draw part of the story or a little surprise on the inside for them when you open it out. So for our second activity this month, you've got some wool in your pack. You also might have to hunt a little bit. You've got a couple of googly eyes. I think you might have three sets so you can make extras. You will need a pair of scissors as well. And we're going to make some um, terrifying lion pom-poms. Um, if you're struggling to find a pair of scissors, please let us know and we will get some to you. Um, so for this, what you're going to do is you're going to find the ends of your wool. You're going to put your orange and your yellow together and you're going to need to borrow someone's hand. You can do it by yourself, but it is quite tricky. And then you're going to get your um, friend or your family member's hand. And you're just going to start and wrap the wool around their fingers. You don't want to tie it too tight. You don't want to trap them. Keep going. Then when you've got to where you're happy, you think you've got enough wool around there, maybe go around quite a few times, you need to just chop your tails off. And then you need to cut another length. It doesn't have to be too long. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in between your person's fingers in the middle of your wool. And you're gonna pull them both ends out and then you're gonna tie a knot in the end here and pull it really, really tight. So now you might trap their fingers. Then you can pull it off. So you've then got two loops of wool where their fingers were. Then you're gonna take your scissors, make sure you take it off their fingers first. We don't want any casualties. And you're gonna put your scissors through where those fingers were and you're just gonna cut all of those strands of wool. And then this side, you're gonna do the same. And this is gonna make you a nice little pom-pom. If you want to hang it up somewhere, leave those, string, those strings quite long. 
Um, you can obviously make it a little bit bigger by putting more wool round, or you could make it even smaller by not doing so much or getting a really small hand, or you can even do it around a fork. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So once you've got your pom-pom, you take a couple of your googly eyes, find a good spot where you're happy with it hanging, stick your googly eyes on. We don't want lions without eyes. Your googly eyes are sticky, they're just a wee bit fiddly to get the backs off, so you might need a grown-up to help. And there you've got your little lion pom-pom to hang around your house. Maybe you can terrify somebody at home by hiding him in a space that they're not expecting. So if you want to make a really tiny pom-pom, um, same again, put your two ends of wool together, get a fork, and you're just going to wrap it around the fork instead of someone's fingers. So hold on to one end, it just makes it a little bit less fiddly. Wrap it round. Keep going. How about there? Trim off your ends again. Take a strand. And then this bit can be a wee bit fiddly. You've got to find the gap in the middle of your fork. I don't know if you can see that. Thread your bit of wool through. Sometimes it's easier actually to leave this bit of wool hanging to start with before you wrap your pom-pom. Then you're going to bring it up to the top. Tie it off just like we did with the big one. Pull it really tight. And this time if you want to, you can start trimming before you take it off your fork, unless you've pulled it really, really tight. Then you're just going to stick your scissors in there, trim round, you can do it in stages if it's easier. Trim round the other side, so you're cutting all those loops. And then you've got a second little lion pom-pom. As usual, if you um, get up to any of these activities and you enjoy them, we'd love to see um, your creations on the Facebook group. If you're not part of the Facebook group and you'd like to be, then get in touch and we can add you in on there. Um, we will see you next month. Bye.